Hi, my name is Amy Standridge, and I'm a board-certified music therapist and owner of Oak Song Music Therapy and Consulting Services here in San Antonio. I've been a music therapist since the year 2000. I have a master's degree in music therapy from Colorado State University and a master's degree in music education from the University of Texas at Austin. Music therapy is a clinical and evidence-based use of music interventions to bring about functional change. Music therapy takes place within a relationship between an individual or group and a qualified music therapist. A music therapist who is qualified has been through an educational program for music therapy, as well as a six-month six clinical internship and a certification by the Certification Board of Music Therapists. All that to say is there's a considerable amount of training and education in, to be a music therapist. Now, that does not mean that you can't use music at home with your loved ones. Part of my work as a music therapist in San Antonio is doing music therapy groups at senior living communities. And so I get to go out and work with a group of seniors, usually with Alzheimer's and related dementias. And we use music participation and listening and singing and playing and dancing together. So music therapy is more than just the music therapist coming in and playing music for the clientele. So in a typical music therapy se session, we will start with a hello song, the same song every week, so people understand that we're beginning our group. And then we'll typically move into some singing of some familiar songs and move on to some more energetic activities using instruments or props or movement to music. But the main focus of our sessions is live music making. It's not music therapist as entertainer. And so there's a reason why we use these, we use music to make improvements in um, older adulthood and in particular with dementia. And that is because music is processed globally in the brain. If you think about what comes in, what goes into a music experience, uh, we don't just sit like a bump on a log and listen. We're engaging in more ways than that. Sometimes we tap our toes, sometimes we sing along. Our brain is processing music on different levels. Uh, it is a whole brain activity that involves listening, which involves one area of the brain, and moving, which involves another area of the brain, and motion and senses, which involves another area of the brain. And this is why music is so effective. So the first thing we typically do in a music therapy group is group singing of familiar tunes. Uh, my favorite to use is You Are My Sunshine. It's really a class favorite. It's something that everybody knows. And what we have found is that, what research has found is that music continues to, um, to be processed and even into middle to late stages of dementia. And so that means sometimes a person, if they can't speak in a sentence, can still sing a song. Sometimes people can still sing an aria that they learned when they were young. And a lot of times, if we don't know the music, don't know the, remember the lyrics, we can still sing along, we can hum along. Research has also shown that group singing can decrease the stress hormones in the brain and can increase feel-good hormones, such as oxytocin. In addition to the brain changes that happen in terms of hormone and mood when we're singing, is increased communication. Sometimes singing a song will bring back memories that have long since been forgotten. And that's a really beautiful thing that happens in a music therapy session. And again, I'm speaking in this video more of the theoretical background about, of music therapy. And in another video in this series, I will give more examples and use some instruments and show you how you can use music at home. In a typical music therapy group, after we've oriented to the situation by a hello song, it's some, some group singing of familiar tunes. And what I find is that occasionally a person in the group who's very quiet beforehand will light up when they start hearing their favorite song. And at first they might not sing along, and that's okay. It takes a while to warm up, and that's why we do singing at the very beginning. It's something that everybody has access to in their, in their memories, especially with familiar music. And so we'll sing You Are My Sunshine, and I'll look around the room, and a couple people will be singing. And then we'll sing the verse again. We'll repeat it, because we need to be able to repeat the information several times to really get people warmed up and engaged. As a musician, sometimes I think we're doing this again. This is getting boring. But usually for my clientele and my group, they're just getting warmed up. So I'll sing the same verse over and over again. And we'll get more participation as time goes on. I have one particular client who, when I come into the group, 
Um, she's usually sitting in her chair with her eyes closed, and it takes a while, and I sing to her anyway, even though I'm not sure she's sleeping or if she's still alert. I'm going to sing to her anyway, so I come right up into her, and I'll tap on her leg and engage her, and then without fail, she opens up her eyes and starts singing along. Sometimes it's just la, 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 or making a sound, ah, ah. Um, but it's still singing. It still counts. And so it's a, singing is a really great way to initiate and to improve that, con that communication, to get that flowing. And then eventually she'll start talking. So that's really lovely. So we've talked about singing with music, what happens to your brain when you're singing with music, singing music. And so, but music is not only singing. Another thing we do in our groups is movement to music. I typically don't use a lot of recorded music in my sessions because live music is just more engaging. But for movement to music activities, a lot of times we will use recorded music. So I'll have a theme. In this case, uh, my next theme coming up is football and marching band. So I'll look up some theme songs and download something from YouTube in terms of a theme song. And we'll do some movement. We'll start with tapping toes. We'll tap heels. We'll march in place. And then we get into some upper extremity movement, too. And what the research has shown is that music and rhythm primes the motor system for movement. If you think about when you're sitting quietly in your home and some, a dog or something knocks something over onto the floor, you startle. You don't hear the noise and then think about it and go, hmm, I'm supposed to be scared, and then startle. It's an automatic response. And so the same thing happens with music. It's an automatic response to movement. Some people will move more than others because everybody's at a different stage of dementia and physical functioning in my groups. Um, but without fail, people will be tapping their toes, tapping their hands, clapping to a beat. Music makes movement more fun. It's more interesting to tap your toes to a beat than it is to do an exercise, at least in my personal experience. When you go to the gym, you typically have recorded music in your ear. It keeps you motivated. And so as we age and we need to stay moving, music is the perfect complement to that. Research has also shown that in Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders, that the rhythmic function of music actually improves gait significantly. And again, this is precognitive. I've seen this work with individuals who have, who have Alzheimer's and related dementias and have had a stroke and have had different physical disabilities that respond to this gait and to gait to the, music, to the function of music to improve gait. And again, this is precognitive. It just happens. If you think about it too much, it doesn't work. If you don't think about it, it works. So for example, you may have seen a video that has been going around on YouTube or Facebook if you do social media that's a physical therapist walking with an individual who has Parkinson's disease and finds that when she plays music for him while he walks, his gait stabilizes. He's better able to initiate gait He's better able to facilitate changes in surfaces um, when you go from carpet to hard floor. It's the rhythmic function of music it gets your motor system primed for that gait. So there's actually a lot of great research about, about this that maybe in a future video we can talk about it more fully. But what we have found, the research shows, that the rhythmic function of music significantly improves gait in older adults. This decreases, can decrease fall risk. It can make us happier, healthier, and able to exercise longer. Being on our feet is so important. We've talked about now how our brain engages with singing. We've talked about how music can help with movement. And the third thing is that we typically do in a music therapy group is instrument play. I brought some instruments with me today. In a later video, I'll give more examples on how to use those instruments. But what we find is the research has shown that the vibrotactile responses in individuals with late stage dementia stays intact very late. So if you are, have a drum seated in your lap that you're playing, those vibrations are being internalized. It's much more salient and understandable than if you are listening to or watching somebody else play an instrument. So when we're playing instruments, we're listening to music, we're engaging with it, we are, our mood is lifted, we're exercising more, and we're also um, planning movements. So I am going to use an instrument. I was going to wait, but I'm going to use some instruments just to kind of show you. So this is just a basic tambourine that I bought at five and below. It costs $3. It's perfectly lovely. And um, so if I were to play this with my hand, 
I'm hearing the move. I'm hearing the music. I'm also using my body. I'm using my hand to strike the tambourine. Uh, it's not hard. You can do it. You can pick one of these up and start today. But if I have this instrument in my lap and I'm tapping it in my lap, or if somebody else is sitting across from me tapping the instrument, I'm also getting all of those vibrations through my legs, up through my torso, into my brain. Again, a multi-sensory way to experience music. So that's why instruments, I are, that's why I use instruments with my older adults. And they're fun. You know, it's interesting when I pass them out occasionally and someone will, will initially say no because we're asking them to try a lot of new things. That's okay. I'll come around back. I'll come around again. Um, I had a situation where I did a drumming activity with a memory care unit and I gave a drum and a mallet to one, one client and I gave, um, a shaker or something, um, it's a very simple egg shaker, to another client. And when I circled back around, because I'm moving around the room, um, Mr. M was holding the drum, Mrs. P had the mallet, and she was hitting the mallet. So they were working together, they were interacting, they were making choices, the egg shaker was no place to be seen. And both of them are experiencing the benefits of mu movement to music, hearing music, and participating in instrument play. We have talked about how music is processed in the brain, how it's processed globally, all regions of the brain are activated. Some would even say your brain lights up like a Christmas tree when you're participating in music. We talked about music and movement, how rhythm primes the motor system for movement, about how music can keep us active longer into life. We've listened, we've heard about how we can, when we walk to an external beat that's similar to our usual cadence, that we can walk better and more efficiently and have better balance. And we've learned that you can play musical instruments without investing a lot of time and money in, in training. Now, as a music therapist, I have had a considerable amount of training, but that doesn't mean that you can't go buy a tambourine and play. So um, I would like to now just share a little bit about my, my business. Um, Oak Song Music Therapy and Consulting Services is a business here in San Antonio. Uh, my, area, my phone number will say 512, but I do not live in Austin. And I would love to have you contact me if you are interested in perhaps providing some music programming for your residents in your senior living community. If you are interested in individual music therapy, in this video we've really talked about group music therapy, but individual therapy is also very powerful. Um, in individual music therapy, we can really hone in on what your goals are for your loved one or your patient or yourself and work one-on-one -on -one together. Um, and, but this, it'll look the similar, we'll do singing, movement, and instrument play, but it'll be one-on-one. -on -one. And I also offer consulting services, and that would be if you are interested in finding out more about how you as an activity director or as a caregiver in your home or with a different clientele can learn how to use music better, I can help you put together a consultation package for you if you're interested. So thank you for listening, and I will see you in a future video.